always think about that. The world just don't know what they're missing. All right. This morning we're going to be diving back into Ephesians chapter two. Um, we're going through one through seven today. You know, it was another one of them I'd planned one through ten, but God's like, nope, we're only going through seven verses this morning. So, um, but you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, tomorrow it marks September the eleventh, twenty twenty three, which marks twenty two years since nine eleven happened. You know, seven fifty nine a.m. Those planes took off, and by eight thirty. Every life of the American people has changed forever. You know, the evil that day left many with many questions. You know, but mainly, why did it happen? You know, but the United States, you know, was united together like never before. You know, this day when evil came and knocked on the door and shook most of us to our core. You know, I remember where I was, as do most Americans. And I had an opportunity to visit the crash site in, uh, I think it's Shawshank, uh, that's how they say it, for uh, Pennsylvania. And if you get an opportunity to go there, I highly encourage you to do it. It was a great experience. It gave me a, a perspective of those who were on the plane to them, what was happening. You know, I had a lot of different emotions, you know, of uh, just, you know, that sadness, that anger, you know, and, and the compassion for the families. You know, we were attacked by an enemy that really no one's seen coming. And, you know, we must continue to pray for those that are affected by this tragedy. I can remember back in 2008, I went to Promise Keepers in Charleston, West Virginia, and I would actually love to see them come back uh, again. But, you know, I hadn't been back in church long. And, but it was, I mean, what a great weekend. It was very powerful. I mean, spirit led. There was a speaker there. Can't tell you his name. Don't even remember what the guy looked like. But I do remember a story that he talked about and he spoke of about 9-11. And I've never forgotten it. After the planes hit the towers in New York City, in this particular office was a group of people. And by this time, it was evident that they were not getting out of the building. But this dude that was in this office with them, they called him the Rev because he was a devout follower of Christ. Well, he began to pray and witness to the people that were there with him. Not sure how many people were gathered in this area at this time. However, the story that he told us, uh, come to mention, there was about 50 or so that actually gave their lives to Christ. And they knew this by the phone calls and the texts that they were getting outside, you know, to their families, letting them know what was going on. You know, I tell this story to say that these people went from death to life and they when they woke they were being greeted by jesus himself it's a powerful story but when i thought about those people on that day every one of them started out thinking that they were going to go to work and then they were going to return home that evening you know i'm not sharing this story to make light of that tra terrible tragedy that happened on 9 9 11 but if you notice i said those who accepted christ went from death to life and this leads us to our sermon title today, which is DOA, Dead on Arrival, But God. Yeah. You know, and that's so powerful. And we need to remember what happened that day and the impact that it had on the world and what impact it still has on us today. And I'm saying for those who surrendered their lives, we're made alive through Christ. We're not promised tomorrow. We're not promised the next hour You know, when we leave here. Which leads me to the point of sharing the story that something beautiful come out of that tragic event. And those who are in Christ are alive and will live for eternity with Christ Jesus. So let's start where we left where we left off before we were in Christ and for, before he was our Lord and Savior. So we're going to be in Ephesians 2, verse 1 through 7. But now let's pray and ask God's blessing upon our message this morning. Let's pray together. Father God, Lord, we come to you. And we just want to lift up the people that will be you know, remembering uh, what happened tomorrow, uh, you know, 9-11, and the pain and, you know, that they're still experiencing of those who were left behind. But Father, we know that you were in control that day, and you're in control of today. And Lord, we just ask that you just come before us now, prepare us, teach us, Challenges and move us forward, Lord, 
and the message that you have for us today and then allow us to apply it to our lives and then go share it with others. Lord, you know, they don't know what they're missing when it comes to having a relationship with you. Father, we love you and we thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so where we were uh, in Ephesians, we're going to go through and just kind of break this down like we have been. Uh, we'll read verses 1 and 2 first, and then we got some stuff to discuss, and then we'll continue on. And it says in verse 1, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, which you previously walked according to the ways of this world, according to the ruler of the power of the air, and the spirit now working in the disobedient. And may God add his blessing through the reading of his word as we go through uh, today. Uh, you notice your, your note thing has like two sides just because there's a lot of things we're going to be kind of going through. And it's just there was too much for me to get it all on the one sheet. So it's kind of you flip it over, you can see it. Uh, but anyhow, as we look at these two verses, Paul gives us a picture of who we were before Christ saved us. We were spiritually dead. This isn't something that we were. This something. Uh, this is something that we are, not something that we were. In this letter to the Ephesian church, Paul writes of the great gift that God has given them, them and us through His Son. Because of Jesus, they there were not just merely bad people made good, but dead people made alive. Yeah. When Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, in Genesis three, they brought both physical and spiritual death to God's perfect world. The moment they transgressed God's law, their eyes were opened, and they realized that they were naked in Genesis 3-7. For the first time, mankind tasted the rebellion and was awakened to the difference between good and evil. They had experienced no evil, no shame, no guilt up until that moment. But with one forbidden bite, their souls and their bodies began to die. From that point forward, man was spiritually dead eternally separated from Christ. You know, we were walking in according to the world. We were conformed to the patterns of the world. Think about it. Before you were saved, were your thoughts on Christ and what He wanted for your life? Absolutely it was not. Our focus was what we wanted. It was, you know, when I was growing up, all I wanted to do was drive trucks, make a pile of money, and, you know, eventually have a family. However, I would talk the way that I wanted. If I wanted to have a drink, no problem. I didn't care. You know, whatever I did was without any thought of it being sinful. And this is what this is talking about. In John 8, 42 through 44, Jesus said to them, If you were, uh, if God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God, nor I have come of myself, but he who sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you're not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil. The desires of your father, you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources. For he is a liar and the father of it. Wow. This was us. We were following our own desires under the control of the, the devil. I mean, it's just, it is what it is, what it says. Under the control of the devil, of Satan. Look at uh, back at Ephesians 2, 2. It says, In which you previously walked according to the ways of the world, according to the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit now working in the disobedient. We were disobedient. The working of the enemy was being played out in my life before I was uh, came to Christ. And I will say that if you have not yet given your life to Christ, then you are still walking according to the world and under the control of the devil. That's what scripture tells us. We can be good people, but without Christ, we are still separated from him. You know, scripture gives us a clear picture in 1 John 5, 19. It says, we will know that we are of God and the whole world uh, and the world lies under the sway of the wicked one. This is anyone that is not in Christ. They are under the sway of the wicked one. If we are saved, we will know that we belong to God. Why? Well, Scripture tells us, you know, my sheep follow me. They know my voice and they follow me. That was Jesus saved. And it also tells us that we can't serve two masters. So we can't serve God and Satan at the same time. We're going to love one and hate the other. I mean, the Bible lays this out for us. 
and you know i know that sounds harsh but i mean it's i mean it's what scripture tells i mean you know it's what it says this is what paul was laying out uh this is us before we were saved when we were not filled with the holy spirit walking in the spirit we became completely vulnerable to the power of satan satan he is real he wants to eat your face off and he wants nothing more to do than to destroy you and keep you tangled up in the world so that you you know stay separated from god that's his goal he knows that he, he knows he's gonna lose in the end but he's like if i'm going down i'm gonna take as many as i can with me and right now he's having a field day yeah. but we're about to change that his goal is to sell us the lie that it is about ourselves and indulge into what we want to indulge in the flesh so let's look on down into verse three there of ephesians we too all previously lived among them in our fleshly desires, carrying out the inclinations of our flesh, our thoughts, and we were by nature children under wrath, as of the others were also. So this is saying that we lived that you know to carry out the worldly desires of our body and our mind. As Christians, we need to understand this. God, just as God is the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We were created as a triunity. This means we were created the body, which is the flesh, our soul, which is our mind and our emotions, and then the spirit. And what we need to understand that is before Christ, that spiritual part, well, it's dead. It's not alive. And so what is left if the spirit's dead? It leaves the flesh and the soul. We were governed by the flesh and the soul. And this shouldn't surprise us. I mean, since the spirit was dead in us, Christ hasn't made us alive in him. And how many of us have seen the evil in this in others or just in our world, you know, living worldly? I mean, has it surprised you? You know, I think sometimes some of that stuff does, but it really shouldn't. I mean, because we now we know that because they're living out the lives that's governed by their bodies, by the flesh and by their spirit, they're, you know, because they're spiritually dead. And so they don't know any better. Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and is desperately wicked. Who can know it? So no, none of us should really be surprised at the evil that we see in the world. You know, Paul calls us children of wrath in Ephesians 2, 3, because prior to knowing Christ, everyone is under the judgment of God, which leads us to the next thing you know, to think about is, the su we are all subject to the wrath of God before we knew him. Right. And when we think about the world is subject to that wrath. And if you read the Bible, it's, well, that wrath's coming. You know, it sounds frightening. Romans 6.23a says, for the wages of sin is death. That's what we've earned. You know, before <laughs> Christ, that's what you and I, we earned that because of our sinful nature. As unbelievers, we were children of wrath. The thing that characterized us was God's wrath. Our destiny was separation from God, and that's what we deserve. You know, something to think about uh, when Christ went to the cross, he paid for our sins, every one of us. You know, in Romans 2 5, it says, But in accordance with the hardness of your infinite heart, you're, store, you're treasuring up for yourself the wrath in the day of wrath and the revelation of the righteous judgment of God. So for everyone who rejects Christ, and continues to live the life of sin, all of God's wrath is being stored up until the day of judgment. And then every sin, all that wrath that has been stored up, if you have not been saved by the blood of Christ, is going to be placed back on you. I mean, that, I mean, just the thought of that, I mean, just scares me. Or, you know, you know, to think about people that we know that doesn't know him and what's waiting on them. It should definitely make us think. And, and, you know, up until this point, you know, everything that we looked at has painted a pretty grim picture of the future. You know, of what it would have been like without Christ. But God. I, I love that. I, I think I really need that on a t shirt. But God, and just leave it at that and let people talk to me. Then we look on down at Ephesians 2, verses 4 and 5. It says, But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love that he had for us, made us alive with Christ, even though we were dead in our trespasses. 
you are saved by grace. Love that. Love it. Love it. This is huge. For those of us that have been saved by Jesus Christ, we are alive. I mean, this is a beautiful statement. That, I mean, that just, you know, just pump us up. He did this because he is of his mercy and his love. Romans 5 8 says, But God demonstrates his own love toward us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, there's a song I love. It's called Glorious Day. And uh, it's one of my favorites. And, you know, it makes me want to jump and just pump my hand. But it says, when you called my name, I ran out of the grave. You know, so when God called our, called our name and we answered, we were made alive forevermore. We ran out of the grave. I mean, that I mean, alone make you shout amen, right? Amen. 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 That, I love it. That last statement, you are saved by grace. This is undeserved, unmerited favor. We didn't earn any of it. It's just God's grace. This is the only way to be saved. Christ paid our sin debt and made a way for us to be with Him. So we look on down in verses 6 and 7. He also, he also raised us up with Him to be seated us or and seated us with Him in the heavens in Christ Jesus so that in the coming ages we might display the immeasurable riches of his grace through his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. So we looked at you know, who we were and painted the picture of who we were before we were saved. But now, look at after the fact, after Christ has saved us, we were alive. You know, I can remember when I was little, you know, I went to church. I went to vacation Bible school. I, you know, I did all of the Easter services. I mean, if the doors was open, I lived with my grandmother. If the doors was open, I was in church. But I was still dead, spiritually dead, until 2008. And when I fully surrendered my life to Christ, I was saved. God opened my eyes, opened the heart, those eyes of my heart, Lord, because I wanted to see Him. And He, and then. I was made alive through Christ. Praise God. And from that point forward, I was seated with Christ. From a human perspective, the idea of sitting in heavenly places is challenging you know, to grasp, especially on this side of eternity. You know, it's a spiritual thing. We're spiritually set until he calls us home. But nevertheless, this is an experience for everyone who has been redeemed by God's grace. As astonishing as it sounds, Christians are united with Christ in His resurrected life. You know, Colossians 2.12 says, Buried with Him in baptism, which you were also raised with Him through faith in the working of God who raised Him from the dead. Romans 6.4, Therefore we were buried with Him through baptism into His death, just as Christ was raised from dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. That's baptism, you know. And there was, you know, it's it saddens me. There's some, you know, church denominations and you know religions that says that you can't go to heaven unless you're baptized. Well, that's wrong. Christ saves you. That's it. Baptism, all thing that is, is a representation of you dying to your old self, raised to new. You know, the old is gone, the new is here yeah. now, and I'm yeah. making a profession of faith. Yeah. You know, Second Corinthians five seventeen says, "Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, passed away. Behold, all things have become new." Yeah. I mean, that just gives me chills when you think about it, because you know yeah. that what we got to wait for, and what's I mean, it's just awesome to think about our permanent re residence, the zip code, heaven. That's where we're headed. Philippians three twenty says, "For our citizenship is." in heaven from which we also eagerly await for the savior the lord jesus christ you know with the way things are in our world and sometimes i'm like just come this lord just get us out of here you know it's getting it's getting bad down here but we know he's not done he's not ready he knows there's people that they still need to be saved and that's where you and i come in and the apostle paul prays for the ephesian church to understand and as we read it we need to understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in Him. The same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead 
seated in him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realm. Paul explains the greatness of God and incredible power towards other believers is rivaled in magnitude of his love, mercy, and grace. When we truly understand that we are completely you know, that we are completely unaware of the kingdom and what that truly means before we're saved. We don't have a clue what that means. Since we have been raised to new life with Christ, we can set our sights on the realities of heaven. You know, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. You know, our spiritual seat in the heavenly realms, the position of high honor, it much like being seated at the VIP table of something maybe like the you know the presidential luncheon or you know, something great. I mean something extravagant. You know, being the VIP up front and center. I mean it's even better than that. You know we have been given royal privilege and been enthroned with the Son, and one day we will partake of His glory if we let the spiritual truth sink in. It will change the way we think and the way that we live. Because we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Our position in heavenly is secure, but we must never forget that we don't deserve our place there. We did nothing to earn it, but God, He, he graces us with it anyway. Amen. I mean, that's just when you think about it, and you're reading through this and putting on the notes and stuff, and we've been talking a little bit about this, and we're starting to see some overlapping of you know God's word and how He's teaching us and what He's preparing us for here at First Baptist Church Standard because he's preparing us for growth. He's getting us ready because he's going to do some mighty things. I just know it. You know, and this is one of the things that we're doing is we we are living, we are a living display of God's grace and kindness. You know, we look at verse 7 again. It says, so that in the coming ages he might display the immeasurable riches of his grace through his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. We are a living display of God's grace and kindness. Yeah. You know, I didn't do anything to earn his grace or favor, nor did anyone else. But God has given us so much. You know, we didn't deserve it. It wouldn't what we do deserve is life separated from God. I mean, that's what we earn. I mean, that's what Scripture tells us in six twenty. You know, the wages of sin is death. That's what we earn. That's what we deserve. But now we are we are saved, and now we live differently. We display Christ, you know, and live to serve Him and do our best to glorify Him in our actions. I mean, that should be our our daily goal. You know, and I have to try to remind myself of that when I get frustrated. You know, you have to think back, you know, like the cow and that attitude check and you know, praise the Lord. I mean, if any of you have been to cow and you'll hear that, you know, and when you're, you know, just a side note, when you're a campfire, it's open like this and you got 300 students in there and they say it and you hear it echo it off the mountains, chills up the spine. And I'm not kidding. I mean, it's just, it's just fantastic. Yeah. But that attitude check when you say praise the Lord, it's kind of hard to have a bad day when you're praising God. Amen? Yeah, you know, just think about that. So the question is before us, and those, you know, that will be watching this later, since, you know, we still got, we got to pray for our internet to get back up so we can do some live services. But, you know, you know are we walking in the spirit or are we living for, the, you know, who we were? You know, because there are people who get saved and ask Christ to come into their lives and then they just turn around and go right back to the same stuff that they were doing before. They're not allowing the Holy Spirit to come in and do the change that needs to happen. You know, and, and it's the part of, that we have to do consciously. You know, we're all going to be uh, different. You know, if you've not been saved, you're still spiritually dead and those who have been made alive through Christ can get wrapped up in the world easily. You know, it happens. But that's why, you know, we keep reading in our Bibles. You know, keep just cramping, you know, just filling it in because you fill yourself with God's word and you ain't got no room for anything else. You know, Romans 12, 2 says, and do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be able to prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We see so many Christians trying today to live worldly. And try to follow, and, and you know, and try to follow Jesus, and it's not possible. You can't do both. We must right. choose. Amen. You know, in the book of James, it says the friendship with the world makes us an enemy of God. And I will say that 
when you first get saved, you're not going to have it all together. You know, this is something that we need to understand. And, you know, a lot of people, they do get discouraged thinking that, you know, when they first get saved, that they stumble. Well, you know, and they're like, well, I, I done blowed it. Well, it's not the case. It's like a, a baby, you know, when they're first born. They can't do anything. You know, it's what you teach them. You know, as they learn, they start doing, you know, getting the head bobbing and, you know, and then they then they start figuring out how to hold themselves up and then it's the crawling. And then, you know, it keeps going a little bit longer. Then they're pulling themselves up. The next thing you know, they're walking across the floor, getting into everything. And so but it's the same thing with us as Christians. It's that we start out the spiritual babies, but we got to keep trying and keep doing and keep moving forward in order to learn, you know, to, to grow in Christ. It's a process of learning and stumbling, but always moving forward. You know, God has given us all that we need to grow close to Him. You know, we just need to be willing to be disciplined, you know, moving forward. I mean, you think about it. You know, if our children mess up when they were growing up, you know, you know today it's timeout. We didn't get timeouts. So, you know, I think about it. It's, it's, Speaker Rick Rigsby talking about he said he wished he had timeout. He said he could time how long he was knocked out, but he didn't have no timeout. And I'm like, you know, that was the error we come up in, you know, go get that switch off that tree. But, you know, when we discipline our child, it wasn't because we didn't, we were being mean. It was because we wanted to learn what was right or wrong. And so when you and I mess up, God, our Heavenly Father, He's got to discipline us. That's the only way we're going to learn. But we're going to keep moving forward. It doesn't mean He doesn't love us any less. He's going to encourage us and he's going to give us a pat on the back, that at a boy or at a girl when you do the things that are good. If you and so, but we gotta ask ourselves sometimes, you know, how are we doing? We gotta do that self-reflection and ask, yeah. you know, do you need prayer? Uh, you know, moving past the barrier that's fully you know, to fully trust him. You know, I think about those who haven't accepted Christ, you know, uh we just need to tell them. It's like, let me tell you about my Jesus. Amen. You know, there's a better way to live, you know, than the, the world that we live in. I mean, the world's crumbling. It's falling apart. It's going away. And it's dying. You know, yeah. and there's stuff is coming that, you know, and if you're not in Christ's family, then it's not going to be good for you. Right. You know, even after the rapture, you know, you can get into, there's going to be people who are saved. But I don't even, I wouldn't want to even think about what you're going to have to go through. But this is why we're here, to learn, to be challenged, and to be encouraged to grow closer to God. And then, you know, after we get lifted up and filled up and powered, I mean, you know, you're ready to go out the door and like, all right, let's go. That's, you know, where you want me to go now, Lord? You know, that's what we want to do. And so that's the purpose of our study. You know, mm -hmm. that first part kind of gives us a glimpse. You know, so I'm hoping it affects people who watch it later. And so but I just want to grow closer to God. And he's taught me so much in just that little short time. I mean, I've been digging in, and I mean, I've researched, and you know, I mean, it's just, and I'm having a blast, you know. And so, Amen. yeah, and you know, and I tell Regina, I was like, I want to get out of this trucking business. I, I don't, I don't want to do trucking. I want to, I want to do this. This is what I want to do. So you know, we're just, I just keep praying for God to do that, and eventually He's going to answer, answer the prayer, and you know. Yeah, you know, he's planning me here, and we're going. You know, he's preparing some big stuff for us, and I can't wait. So, but that's our message for today and our study. So I want to pray now, and then we'll have Miss Janice come back up and lead us in a song of prayer. and And I hope you all are encouraged and lifted up as as much as I have been today. Let's pray, Father God, Lord. We just thank you and love you for you know. Sometimes when we dive into some scripture, there's some tough things we need to hear. But Lord, we need to hear. It. And so, Lord, that this teaches us, and then we can then we can take and and go and share. And you know, when, when people are ask us questions, we can respond you know, through you. You know what you want them to hear, Lord. And there are so many people I think that have just missed the calling that you have called upon their lives. And Lord, we pray for those people. We want them to be here. We want them to be in church. We want them to be involved and being and serving. So, Father, use us. You know. You know, it's hard to say, but whatever you got to do, Lord, to get their attention and do it and, and then you know, just bring them alongside you. Father, we want to grow closer to you and we want to be the strong witnesses you have called us to be and allow us just to serve you and glorify you in everything that we do. Father, be with us when we leave here today. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.
All right, Mr. 